he uh, initiated, uh, attempted to initiate a traffic stop on that subject. That subject did flee. Uh, a brief pursuit uh, was uh, had went on. Uh, ultimately, they were able to get the subject stopped uh, at Wesley and 41 in Lake Forest. Uh, the subject was taken into custody without incident. Ukraine's forces are gathering to defend Donetsk. They're taking up new defensive lines in the region where they still control major cities. Many residents are evacuating. The city of Slovyansk came under shelling again overnight. Russian missiles have destroyed homes and killed several people in recent days. The streets of Lysychansk have fallen quiet. But the wreckage is everywhere. The capture of the city means that all of the Luhansk region is now in Russian hands, an objective that Moscow has coveted since the war began in February. Ukrainian military commanders ordered their forces to pull back, rather than attempting to hold the city. For the exhausted soldiers who retreated, Russia's artillery advantage proved overwhelming. At least six people were killed and eight others injured when a chunk of a glacier broke loose and slid down a mountainside in Italy. The ice crashed into a group of more than a dozen hikers who were making their way across a popular trail. Ten people are reportedly still missing. Five rescue helicopters and dozens of alpine search and rescue specialists, including rescue dogs, have been deployed to the scene on the Marmolada mountain in the Dolomites. Warmer than usual temperatures are believed to have caused the ice to break away. When General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan started his speech on Monday, few expected this type of message. The military institution will not participate in the dialogue facilitated by the tripartite mechanism. This aims to pave the way for the political and revolutionary forces and the other national components to sit together to form a national and independent government. The man who led the coup against a civilian transition government in October is now saying he's stepping back and calling on civilians to form a government. This apparent U-turn from the military strongman comes amid protests in which nine people died on Thursday. If it's removal, doubts that it's becoming a puppet of Pakistan, Afghanistan's Taliban government has raised the price of coal just hours after Pakistan decided to import more coal from Kabul. Now, Pakistan's Prime Minister Shabaz Sharif has approved the import of the supercritical quality coal from Afghanistan in Pakistani rupees instead of dollars to help generate low-cost electricity in the country. As per Sharif, importing from Afghanistan would save Islamabad over $2 billion, vital foreign currency for the country already under heavy financial crisis. Hours after the announcement, the Taliban increased the price of coal from $90 per ton to $200 per ton and set custom duties at 30%. The Eiffel Tower is crumbling, and the only solution to stop its decay is a full renovation. This is a warning that has now been published in a French magazine. 
According to the French magazine Marianne, the iconic monument is currently in a dire situation riddled with rust and needs immediate repairs from its core. The tower is presently undergoing a repaint costing nearly $62 million in preparation of the 2024 Olympics. This is the 20th time that the tower is getting repainted. According to an initial plan, some 30% of the tower was supposed to have been stripped and then repainted, but delays in work caused by the pandemic has now slashed the area that was supposed to get repainted to just 5%. Experts have called the current repaint a cosmetic facelift that will give a lamentable result in the future. They say the tower needs to be completely stripped back to the metal and then repaired. In this colourful sea of trash near Yemen's capital, Sana'a, there are vials and bottles of toxic medical waste. These are not supposed to be here. Officials at Al Azrakain landfill say untreated hospital waste is being dumped every day, posing a danger to the health of workers and residents. Officials here say Sana'a's only medical waste incinerator was bombed in 2015 by Saudi coalition airstrikes. Now there's nowhere to put the waste. The World Health Organization says 15% of all medical waste is considered hazardous. This includes sharp materials such as syringes and infectious, toxic or radioactive waste. 